We're still mostly a domestic U.S. Uh, investor, probably more than half of our investments. Uh, outside the U.S., about maybe 30-40% of our investments are global. Um, we are investors in Southeast Asia, uh, all across Southeast Asia, uh, in India, in Latin America, in the Middle East, and in Europe. Uh, we have about $275 million under management right now. Uh, we're raising a new fund that will hopefully be $150 to $200 million. And we're also raising a bunch of smaller regional vehicles that are either country-based or regionally based. Uh, a few that are vertically focused as well. Uh, the check size that we usually invest out is probably 100,000 US. That can vary as small as maybe 25,000, as large as 250,000. Uh, we usually invest when companies are raising their first round of capital, uh, maybe as small as two to five people. Uh, we usually invest when they have a functional product and they have some customers. Uh, but we're substantially early, usually before Series A investors. Uh, we run accelerator programs in the U.S. and in Mexico. That's about half of our investments. Uh, but we do co-invest with other investors all over the world at seed stage, and occasionally at Series A and maybe Series B a little bit. Uh, Africa is still pretty new for us. We've done maybe about 10 investments in Africa so far. Uh, I think a couple each in Ghana, Nigeria, South Africa, and Kenya. Uh, we've done a, a little bit more than that in Egypt, uh, but that's mostly more connected with our Middle East fund that's doing uh, Arabic-speaking market investments. Um, so we're still learning about Africa, but we think it's a big opportunity and looking forward to doing a lot more investing in the future. One of the reasons I came was to learn more about what's going on in the local market. I think, uh, you know, in general, the historical view of Africa is that it's still a developing market. Mm -hmm. uh, I think maybe in the last five years there's been more interest uh, just because of you know larger populations and startups that are getting off the ground. Mm -hmm. So you know, maybe Jumia in Nigeria and a few others. Mm -hmm. uh, people are starting to believe the demographic story that you know, Africa is going to be a very, very big uh, sort of market in the future. Mm -hmm. And so trying to figure out how how and when to enter that market uh, is probably still a little bit unclear to a lot of international investors. But again, that's why I'm here. I mean, I think for someone like you know Mark for Facebook, uh, Africa definitely presents a big opportunity, and you know probably a billion people growing to two billion over the next you know decade or so. Wow. Oh, okay. Did, did you get a chance? You came up with but were you looking to also invest uh, this fair? Um, you know, we're always open to those things. I would say generally we probably want to get to know a little bit more about what's going on before we jump right in. Um, but uh, again, we probably enjoy some access to you know deals from the U.S., but probably we're more looking at local investors and their understanding of what's going on, trying to make sure that we are going into investments with other local market uh, folks as well. Angel investors together to learn about what the best practices are, to learn about more opportunities. Sorry, I, I think the best things about learning about angel investor, or learning about angel investing is getting a group of people together who are familiar with doing investments in a local market, maybe that's all over Africa or might be here in Kenya. Uh, sharing their experiences about best ways to do that and learning about new companies and new opportunities to invest in. So, especially when things are just getting started, it's great to have other people to share experience with and uh, work together on making deals. Well, we've been investor in Savannah Fund and uh, Wana Ali here, and we've kind of gotten some reasonable amount of information about the investment that he's making. Uh, in fact, a couple of those companies that he invested in later came to our programs in the US. Uh, so that's been a source of deal flow for us. Uh, also, we kind of have a local expert on the ground who knows what's going on that can tell us more about specific companies or industry verticals that might be interesting to us. So pretty, pretty common that we want to work with local investors on the ground to help figure out what's going on. I think, you know, one thing is being able to tell your story clearly, uh, and usually that's uh, talking as much about what's already happened or looking backwards at your accomplishments, not so much telling me the future. I think I, I don't necessarily want you to predict the future, I want you to tell me the accomplishments that you've already done in the past, and then paint a picture about how those accomplishments sort of project forward. Um, I think you want to be able to describe what 
customer segment you're going after, what problem you're solving. Ideally, show me the solution that you've built and how that's working. Maybe tell me some stories about the customer's interactions uh, with your product or service. And hopefully maybe show me, you know, the transaction, you know, sort of detail or what uh, customer interaction you've already had. Um, I think most of our advice to entrepreneurs is around kind of staying close to the customer and talking about how you know, the solution or product that they built makes their customers' lives better uh, and why that's different from the other competitive alternatives that might be available. Uh, well, communication is always important, particularly to the investor community if they're raising capital. Um, that said, if the business is working, a lot of times the numbers behind the business tell the story. Uh, so if you've got an existing business with customers and money's coming in the door, I think you just need to tell that story. And so that's probably the best story. Uh, you don't have to be that great a storyteller if the com company's already got customers and making money and growing. Uh, on the other hand, if you're building the product and it's coming in the future, then you have to be a really great storyteller because you're predicting the future again. And I think uh, yeah, most investors are going to be looking at uh, evidence of something already working uh, or previous evidence that you've been able to build a company before. You, know, you might be right, you might be wrong. Um, we would prefer to invest in something that's already working that has the potential to grow. And so we want to hear the story about what's working and maybe how you got there to what's working. Um, not so much what's going to happen next because, you know, well, a little bit of what's going to happen next, but we want that supported by evidence. And so I often tell entrepreneurs, if I catch you speaking exclusively in future tense, that's usually not interesting. I want you speaking in present tense and past tense. What have you done? What are you doing? Not what are you going to do? Best predictor of what, you, what you're going to do is what you've already done.